Hello guys, my name is Nagura and today I have another Season 4 TLDR Dungeon Guide for you. We will be talking about Junkyard today, but I also have all the other Dungeon Guides on my channel, so make sure you check that out and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that type of content. Alright, let's get into it straight away. Junkyard is a very open dungeon. You can freely choose which boss you want to kill first, outside of the last boss because he is flying in the air above one of the other bosses and you don't want to be close to that unit. The position the unit is flying in changes every week, so you can open the map at the start of the dungeon and check which bosses are safe to go to at the start. Once you kill one of the bosses, the unit will change position, so make sure you continuously open the map after killing bosses to see which area is safe to go to. Another important note are the bots scattered around the dungeon. There are three different bots and they are always in the same position. If you click on them, you gain a buff depending on which bot it is. Keep in mind that only one player can click on each bot, and every player can have all three different buffs at the same time. The shock bots give you a very powerful buff, procking a chain lightning on enemies off of your damage spells once in a while. This buff scales with haste, so make sure to choose the haste stat for the shrouded affix. Ideally you want to pick up as many shock bots as possible early on, so take a look at their position and create your route accordingly. The Wilding Bot gives you 10% more health and healing taken increase. This should be picked up by the tank first. The Grease Bot gives you movement speed and haste. This can be good in combination with a Shock Bot. Keep in mind the buffs disappear when you die, so obviously avoid dying as much as possible. And if you end up dying anyway, try to pick up new bots. Now let's go over some important trash mechanics in the general area you will probably encounter outside of the boss rooms and also in front of the last boss. The Mechagon renormalizers cast Shrink onto a random player, and if the cast goes through, the Shrink player will get damaged by other players if they step on them, so make sure to not let that cast go through. Additionally, they also cast Enlarge, buffing a random mob with 100% damage and health increase. This needs to either be interrupted or dispelled if the cast went through. You can also spell steal this buff as a mage, so keep this in mind because it gives you a lot of damage if you do so. The Anodized Colibearers Bearers cast Charge Coil, doing damage to the group if not interrupted, so watch out for that cast as well. Additionally, there are stealthed cats, mostly around the last boss room. These cats are very dangerous as they deal heavy damage with their leap onto a random player. Try to avoid them by not straying too far from the main path. Lastly, the cavalry will charge to a random player's position and then cast Rapid Fire. A frontal Gatling gun while turning clockwise or counterclockwise. Either outrange it or avoid it if you have to stay in melee. Once you're in the Gunker area, you will have to kill three toxic monstrosities to spawn the boss. Those mobs will drag players towards them and at the same time cast a big AoE around them, so make sure to dodge out of that. Other than that, there are also a lot of slime elementals in this area. They will charge towards a random player, knocking and damaging anyone in their path. And the toxic lurkers need to be interrupted on their choking gas cast because it stuns a random player. Since there are a lot of abilities to watch out for with this trash, be careful to not pull too many mobs at the same time. The Ganker boss fight revolves around the toxic goob ability. If you touch the goob, you will be imprisoned in a slime blob and other players will have to damage you out or dispel the disease debuff off of you. But there are squared bots rotating around the boss and if you stand within their circle, you are immune to the toxic goob and they also cleanse the floor. Once in a while the boss will cast splatter, imprisoning a random bot in a slime blob. You either have to damage them out or dispel the disease off of them so they can continue to cleanse. Additionally, the boss will cast Toxic Wave, sending out a wave of goop in all directions. Make sure you are standing within a squared bot safe zone during this ability. You can also outrange this cast, but you have to be really far away to do that and your healer might not be able to heal you anymore. Moving on to the next boss area, Nano and Trixie, let's go over some important trash mobs first. The mechanics will cast Overclock, buffing the trash with 100% haste, so make sure to interrupt this. The crawlers will channel an AoE damage spell and this cannot be interrupted, so make sure to use defensives and be ready to heal the incoming damage. The mechanics will attempt to repair a close by enemy and this heals, so make sure to interrupt or stun it. And the heavy scrap bots cast Repair Protocol, this is also a heal on themselves, so don't let that cast go through either. Lastly, the Scrap Hounds cast a frontal and the animation is pretty difficult to see sometimes, so try to avoid this as it gives you a 50% haste reduction debuff. Now next up is Trixie and Nano. They don't share HP and if one of them is defeated, the other one will become empowered, so try to kill them at the same time. Nano periodically jumps into his mecha cycle and charges across the room. Make sure you check the direction he is charging to because it does very heavy damage if you get hit. 
If Neno is not in his mecha cycle, he will cast a frontal towards a tank and sometimes charge to an area and deal high damage to anyone being hit. So try to avoid that, especially if he casts a frontal after a charge, because then he might be in a different position and you might get caught into it. Trix is a caster and spam casts Taste. This is a stacking dot and needs to be interrupted to make sure the tank can reset the stacks once in a while. Occasionally she will cast Electric Slide, hovering in the air and doing damage to anyone underneath her. Additionally, she will cast Mega Taste. This is a really long, uninterruptible cast, and to avoid it, the marked player has to enter a smoke cloud left behind by Nano. You can also stop the cast by using abilities like Vanish or Feign Death. A trick for this boss is to tank it in a spot behind the boss spawning point. The upside of tanking it there is the fact that you completely avoid the mecha cycle charges, but you still need to walk out into the clouds for mega taste, and additionally you have to less room to work with for Trix's electric slide and Nano's charge. Next up is King Gobamuk. Let's go over some notable trash mobs. The grinders cast Enrage. This needs to be interrupted or dispelled if it goes through. The shamans have two casts that need to be interrupted, so they can be annoying to deal with. Their stone skin cast buffs them up with a damage reduction and CC immunity, and their grasping hex cast roots your whole group and inflicts damage. The bullies also cast an interruptible enrage, and additionally cast a long range frontal towards a random player. This can be difficult to dodge if you pull multiple of them, so watch out for that. King Gobamuk himself constantly spawns scrap bone grunter mobs throughout the fight. These mobs aren't too dangerous, but can quickly overwhelm you if you don't deal with them properly. Once the boss gains 100 energy, he will cast Charged Smash onto the tank. This does very high damage and splits among all players in the impact zone. Every player that gets hit by the Charged Smash gets a debuff called Electric Charge. And with this debuff you can activate the Shock Coils located around the room. Once they are activated, they will one-shot close by Grunters for 20 seconds, so make sure you do activate them. Every 45 seconds the boss also casts Rumble. This ability deals AoE damage to everyone during the channel, and additionally spawns falling rocks you need to avoid. The most dangerous part of the fight happens whenever the two AoE abilities happen in quick succession. Charge Smash doing AoE damage to the group, and Rumble right afterwards, or vice versa. So use defensives for this combo. While moving to the last boss, you will be encountering more of the mobs I talked about at the start of this guide. Keep interrupting the Shrink cast, don't pull any stealthed cats, dodge the Cavalry Frontal, and interrupt the Coil Bearers. The last boss has three phases and rotates between them. In phase 1, you fight a Tankbuster MK1, and while you are fighting this mob, the boss will spawn bots around the room, and they cannot be killed, but can be CC'd. You should try to CC them as fast as possible, and then move the Tankbuster away from them. The boss also flies above the area and casts Cannon Blasts, creating a big line of swirlies that have to be avoided. You can see where the Cannon Blast is coming from if you keep an eye on the boss. Try also to not get separated from the rest of your group. Additionally, the tank needs to mitigate the wreck cast, a tank buster with an additional debuff increasing subsequent casts of the same ability. The tank buster MK1 also casts Fulminating Zap onto a random player, and this does heavy damage and can be especially deadly if casted on the same player multiple times in a row. Once you finish off the tank buster, the intermission phase starts. Either the north or the south overcharge will activate and you have to move there. To get to the overcharge coil, you have to dodge various straps. One trick is to jump over the beams if you want to be extra fast. This is easier if you jump over the beams rotating towards you instead of away from you. Once you reach the top, you have to click on the coil and channel a cast slowly draining its energy. Once it reaches zero, the boss will go haywire and fall to the ground, taking triple damage for 30 seconds. This is the perfect moment to use Bloodlust and all of your offensive CDs. If you don't finish off the boss here, he will fly back up and phase one will start again. So it is a pretty big time loss if you don't have enough damage. On hierarchies, you can pull a renormalizer mob into the boss if you have a mage. Just hard to see it in a corner until the intermission starts, then break the CC and let your mage spell steal the enlarge buff to make sure you have enough damage for the boss. And that's it! I hope you found this guide helpful, I wish you the best of luck in the Season 4 dungeons, good luck with your titles and your achievements, and I'll see you guys on stream. Have a nice rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.